Welcome back everyone to the bench. Today I have this plastic project box from Radio Shack. Inside of it is an audio amplifier. This is actually my main music listening amplifier that's in the front room. It's only probably 15 watts per channel into 4 ohm loads, if that. I'll measure it here to see what it is actually. I don't need a lot of power. I don't play music that loud. And even when I turn it up, it's still plenty loud. I don't want to injure my hearing. And it sounds very good to me, so this is what I use. Well, the main point of this video is to see how much power it uses from the wall. How much AC input power does it actually consume? Well, it has an external power supply, and the reason for doing that is I wanted to have it portable. I could make a dual supply with batteries. I have two 12 volt batteries, you know, one for the positive rail, one for the negative rail, and it could be portable though I haven't really taken it anywhere. I did take it one place, but I used the power supply. Well, I built this in 2011, and pretty much it stays plugged in and turned on. I never turn it off unless I'm leaving the house for more than a day. So it has uh, quite a bit of hours but it works just fine and it prob probably will outlast me. There's no reason it shouldn't. Okay, well, I'll pop the top first and uh, we'll take a look inside. Well, here is the inside. And boy, have the bugs been busy. Little spider webs all over. So this thing could use a little cleaning out. But you notice there's mostly air space. The amp board is just right here, mounted on L bracket, which is mounted to the main heat sink. So I keep everything small, all the parts close together for, you know, proper grounding and everything, short uh, signal path, loops and everything, twisted wires, nice little amplifier. I actually repurposed this box. I had a TDA 2040 amp I built many years ago, like 12 or 14 years ago, I'm not sure. And uh, yeah, about five years ago I built this to replace it, use better circuit layout and everything. Though the other amp worked just fine. I just wanted to upgrade it with the TDA 2050 amp. Nowadays I would probably use an LM1875. It's a little bit better of a hi-fi chip, I think. I've never really tested or compared the distortion performance between the two, but they're, you know, for typical hi-fi use, uh, both have pretty low distortion, which I don't think you could distinguish the difference. But that's inside the amplifier. Take a look inside the power supply. Okay, well, I cleaned the cobwebs out as much as I could. And here is the power supply. This is an old power supply I built for the first version of the amp. Like I said, probably 14 years ago or so. One thing you notice, the filter caps are rather small. Looks like I have two 220 or 2200 microfarads in parallel for each rail. So, if you remember 
watching my one video about the sizing of your supply filter caps, well, I found that 2200 is the minimum. And of course we have a stereo amplifier. So you know, we have 4400 microfarad microfarads per rail. And that is right at the minimum I would recommend. I mean, it'll work, but I'd, nowadays I would probably use two 4700s in series or 10,000. Or maybe a 6800, but yeah, this is near the bottom. And if you're a follower of my channel, you probably remember me doing a repair of this thing. One of the diodes in the bridge rectifier module here opened up, so I had to put a new one in. It was causing half wave on one of the rails, and that causes the output to become a lot weaker because it starts clipping on one side earlier, making your overall output less. So uh, that was a repair I made. Now these chips are good for 25, maybe 30 watts of clean power, but with this center tapped 25.2 volt transformer, two amps, I only get about half of that power. But like I say, again, that's fine with me. I don't need a lot of power for listening to music. I think I had this lid on backwards before. I think it was like this. It should be like this because it's oh, the uh, ventilation is over the heat sink. And speaking of ventilation, that's one of my nagging points. I see people build amplifiers. They'll put a heat sink in there. And they'll be very tiny or, heck, they don't even have holes in the casing. But for the heat to dissipate, you got to have the holes in the top and the bottom. So we have holes and feet to keep the uh, amplifier off the ground. And that, you know, allows some airflow through it. Of course, no heat sink is too large. I use pretty big heat sinks. It makes things last longer. Okay, well, we have everything open. Let's hook it up and get some power measurements. Okay, I have the 4 ohm non-inductive resistors connected. This is a stereo amp, so we do both channels driven. Gonna be the maximum output with no distortion. Okay. Looks like we're getting 7.2, we'll say. There's no distortion. You can see it starts clipping. See the harmonics shoot up big time? But we don't want that. We want no distortion. We're getting uh, 7.2. And. Let me get the calculator going here. 7.2 squared divided by 4 ohm. 12.96. Now we can just say 13 watts per channel. And that's it. That's all I can make. That's with continuous sine wave power though. That's not instantaneous or dynamic. But let me show you another problem. Uh, let me adjust this. Now watch when I clip it. See that ripple? That ripple on top there? The reason it's doing that is because the one kilohertz draw off of this is kind of beating with the 60 hertz supply and these capacitors are just a little too small 
So the problem is, when I measure the clipping, it's got to be at the lowest point of that peak. So I am leaving a little bit of power on the table by having, by having too small of filter capacitors. So it probably, so probably be a good idea to upgrade these. Like I said before, use a larger size. And here's something else. Listen when I turn the signal on and load this power supply down. See if you can hear the hum. Turn it off. Turn it on again. So when I load down this transformer, I am getting a nice hum there because the transformer is delivering heavy current. So that was interesting. Okay, now I'm going to plug in my little kilowatt and see the actual power draw from the amplifier. Okay, I have the kilowatt meter plugged in. And this power supply does not have a power switch. The amplifier does. This just stays on all the time. And we're drawing 5 watts, 5.1. Well, the transformer does have some magnetizing losses. And there are discharge resistors. So when this thing's unplugged, they'll drain off the charge in the capacitors. Let's see. So we're in about 5. Let's check our voltage. We're about 122. Five. Let's see what the volt amps are. So we're running uh, about nine and a half volt amps. That's, of course, due to the inductance of the transformer. Now I'll let's go back to watts. Let's turn the amplifier on. Okay, I turned the amplifier itself on, and at quiescent it's drawing 8.5 watts so it went up about three and a half watts okay so now I have the amplifier set to two volts of RMS output and that would equal well it'd be two squared which is 4 divided by 4, that'd be 1 watt per channel. And now the amplifier is drawing 22.7 watts. Well, why does that happen? Well, because the amplifier, even though it's not swinging to the rails, there's still a big voltage drop across those output transistors that have to be dissipated. Because even though we're not dissipating a lot in our loads, there's still that big overhead. So yeah, just delivering one watt continuous causes us to draw that much power. Now I'm going to turn it up to the clipping point. We're at 40. We're at about 4 volts now. Increasing. There's clipping. Let me back it off so there's no clipping again. About 7.2 or so. Wow, we're drawing 67 and a half watts. Let's see. Bolt amps is 78.2. Now let's say we're playing some really bass rap music or whatever that have those sustained bass notes and the kitties came in and cranked it up into clipping they were about 10 percent I don't know what that is exactly but so now we're uh, 74 watts and uh, 85 volt amps
So, there you go. I didn't know it was going to be that much. But the amplifier certainly draws quite a bit of electrical power, even though it's only 13 watts per channel. You know, we're drawing about 70, almost as much as a 75 watt light bulb. Of course, with music, it's not going to be sustained like that, but you know, if you have bass music with sustained bass notes, you know, they drag on for a second or so. Yeah, that's quite a bit of power draw. Well, that was certainly fun experiment and interesting test. Thanks for watching.